know that the instruction manual says and common sense says that we should take it in for servicing uh, periodically, usually once a year. But yet there's a lot that we can do in the meantime to keep it purring along so that we can make those perfect stitches. I had an experience recently in which I sat down with Kathy uh, with my own machine and it said, uh, let me work along with you. And as she worked, and I was absolutely amazed at what I learned, even though I read the book and so forth. So I thought it would be useful for us to uh, just have a good work session with Kathy and go over those things that we need to know to keep the purr in our machine. So Kathy, tell us about it. Just about every machine that your quilting people have are going to be what's called front loading mm -hmm. or top loading, mm -hmm. where the bobbin goes in from the top. Mm -hmm. A really important rule about sewing machine and what you can do with your sewing machine, if the screw is shiny and pretty, go ahead, take it out. That's just a really good rule because on this Bernina, we're going to be taking off a shiny screw here that's designed for you to be able to take off. Well, so we're going to start with this Bernina. It's front loading. It's a Bernina, but if somebody has that wonderful old Ultra Stitch Kenmore or an old Bradford, any of those front loading machines where you open a door and there's your bobbin case, the rule is the same. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we've already got your door off. This is your bobbin case. I don't want it in there while I'm cleaning. This is called the gate. All your front loading machines have a gate. Mm -hmm. Some of them have what I call windshield wipers. Mm -hmm. There'll be two tabs. They open up. The gate opens and then this comes out. Whenever I handle this, I handle it like it's a puzzle piece so that I know when I go to put it back in, I can't put it in wrong. Mm -hmm. okay? And nobody can put it in wrong. Mm -hmm. So I take that out. I always take the needle out. I'm not going to put this needle back in. If your needle isn't good, when you go to start, this machine could be immaculate. If that needle's not good, you're not going to have a good sewing experience. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to use this as a cleaning tool. Okay. So we're going to save that. I'm going to take the foot off. Yes. This is the presser foot. Not the thing on the floor that's the foot control. Mm -hmm. This is the presser foot. That's a real common mistake. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take the presser foot off. On some machines, there'll be shiny screws here mm -hmm. that we would be taking out. On this particular Bernina, I'm going to push the corner, and there's my plate. Okay. Okay. A lot of people use Q-tips to clean their machines. The reason why I don't like Q-tips or cotton swabs is I've got sharp, pointy things in there and it grabs the cotton fibers. Mm -hmm. So I brought with me a paintbrush. Okay? And I just can, an ordinary just paintbrush? Just an brush? ordinary paintbrush. Mm -hmm. um, if your machine is really dirty, mm -hmm. I would recommend one a little stiffer than this. Mm -hmm. But I like this because I can reach in, pull out, and take the lint off. Mm -hmm. And this machine will real, really be able to see that. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm brushing hard. Put your hand out, Hollis. See how hard I'm pushing? I see, All right. yes. I, and I'm not going to hurt anything doing mm -hmm. that. If I do it like this, I'm not taking the dirt off. So mm -hmm. I'm really digging in there. Mm -hmm. I'm always inspecting stuff. If this machine had been like at an open window all the time, at this point I might have spotted some rust. Mm -hmm. The quilter is not going to take care of the rust. If you spot rust when you open the machine, it's got to go to the technician. Mm -hmm. But this one's shiny clean. Now, the next thing that you do, and it helps when you tip it back, this hook, and I'll put it back in, is always oscillating back and forth, back and forth. And it's sitting on a little bit of a ledge. And I noticed something when I took this out. Here's my, here's my tool. I'm going to take my needle and that's what I just pulled out. And it did not show. Just from looking, you don't see that. Mm -hmm. But because 
what I was looking at wasn't nice shiny metal. I knew there had to be something else there. Mm -hmm. This hook has been sitting on that dirt. That's making this machine work harder. I see. So once I have this dug out with the screw, with the, with the needle, now I'm going to use a stiffer brush. Mm -hmm. Toothbrush is ideal. And again, I am pushing down hard, but it's plastic bristles. I can't mm -hmm. hurt anything in there. Mm -hmm. I have one half cleaned. I do my hand wheel. And now I can clean the other half. If the quilter did that after every quilt, you could probably double the amount of time you can avoid from bringing it to the technician. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. Because that's causing the most problem with stitch formation because it's making this mm. work really hard. Well, I've noticed on the machine that there's a, on that section, there's a little bit of a groove in there. Is that where that lint was hanging? That's exactly where I it was see. hanging out, okay? And because I am the way I am with clean machines, I have a rag. This isn't just a paper towel. This is a shop paper towel. Mm -hmm. You can use a face cloth. What you want is something that, that's strong, that doesn't have lint. Because I don't, I'm taking dirt out. I don't want to be putting any mm -hmm. lint back in. So face cloth works really mm -hmm. good. So I'm going to go in there, and again, I'm pushing really, really hard. And I'm still getting dirt out. Mm -hmm. All of this dirt is, okay, now here's, I wasn't expecting to find this. Is this your machine, Hollis? Yes. Okay, Where, what would those be from? Well, I probably cut little nips of something and off. And do you cut while you're working close to here? I didn't think I did. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't but, expecting that yes, to come out, mm -hmm. okay? So, and that's a good thing to get out of there mm -hmm. because most of the machines that load like that have a gear back here or a belt, and I don't want that getting in there. Mm -hmm. So the other thing that I would n normally do is have a vacuum cleaner, just a small handheld one, and suck the dirt out. Mm -hmm. um, a question that I get real often is, can I use canned air? If you use canned air, two things are happening. First off, you're pushing the dirt in deeper, probably to the gears that mm -hmm. are back here. And if it's a muggy day like today is, the canned air will make any metal in here very, very cold, and you're gonna have condensation, and condensation equals rust. Mm -hmm. And I also don't want, because that's what you get I when you see. blow into your machine, mm -hmm. all right? While we're looking in this area, we have a row of, of lint that's building up on the needle bar. I'm always cleaning. This machine will have lint there. Mm -hmm. All machines get lint right there. I've noticed that. Okay. Yeah. And I don't know if it's the thread or the fabric or the batting, but you are using so much cotton. And every time that needle pierces through the cotton, you're pecking away at little fibers. They become airborne. The reason why they're sticking there is there's also a fine film of oil. Mm -hmm. So it's just a trap for that mm -hmm. lint. So clean it off. Okay. So now I've got everything pretty darn clean. I'm going to wrap this cloth around fingernail here, see if there's any more dirt. A little bit more. Is that amazing? Mm -hmm. Both sides. All right. Now I'm doing good. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, that's, that's in nice condition now. The next thing I'm going to do is oil, okay? This is a very readily available oiler. The thing you don't want, I call it the Tin Woodman way of oiling. Mm -hmm. Remember when they did the Tin Woodman, it was a Yeah. And that's plenty of oil. That's plenty of mm -hmm. oil. Because if I put tons of oil in, and it drips down and it keeps dripping. Every time you take a stitch, you're gonna be pulling oil up. Mm -hmm. So the oil bottles that people cut the top off and make yeah. this huge hole, mm -hmm. you can't put a small drop of oil. So if you can find something like this, 
or if you've got the regular bottle, use a hot needle and put a hole in. So what I'm going to do, we've got a circle. I'm going to put the drop at the top of the circle and it's going to come down. And that's how much oil I want. Okay. I want enough oil to just come down. Let me ask circle. you about the oil. You didn't specify uh, the kind of oil. I is there an important, is it important the kind of oil that you're putting in? It should say sewing machine. Not, it won't say sewing machine only, but I don't want it to be for sewing machines and hinges. I do not want you to do uh, three-in-one oil. Okay. Three-in-one oil has paraffin in it and it's like making this area into a little candle. Mm -hmm. And it's one thing if you use three-in-one oil on a 70-pound door, but you have this very small hook that's going to be basically floating on a skim of oil, and you want it very, very clear like this. Well, do you get the oil only in a, in a, a shop that sells sewing machines, or can you buy it anywhere? You can buy it anywhere, but it will say sewing machine, machine. oil. Mm. Right. That's always a question that comes up on the internet. Yeah. Uh, can I use such and such on it? And invariably, uh, the answer will come back absolutely not, yeah. unless it's sewing machine. And it really. And now, with some of the very, very new sewing machines, um, there's a very specific oil that you need to get from your dealer for this area. Mm -hmm. um, the word viscosity is really important with oil. And this is a nice, that's, that's a lubricating mm -hmm. power. And it's the, the fluidness of mm -hmm. it. The viscosity of the brand new high-tech machines is different than this machine mm -hmm. that is just a powerhouse machine. Does oil have a shelf life? Yeah. Um, I would start being concerned with oil at about seven years because oil goes from being a lubricant to an adhesive. So I shouldn't buy the can of oil for sewing machines that I bought at the flea market. No. <laughs> no. And I know the pretty pretty little cone yeah. oilers, they're so lovely. If you put that in there, you're going to have a really hard time getting that mm. oil out of there because it's going to be like sludge. So it's just like the expiration date on a can of peas or yep. beans. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to tip this back so you can see mm -hmm. the oil is dripping down. Here's my hook that I'm holding mm -hmm. by the post. I put it in. The oil is holding it in. I am hardly touching that. Mm -hmm. um, when I do this with kids, and, and I let kids mm -hmm. do this, I'll say, pretend you're holding a butterfly wing. Mm -hmm. If I hold on to that tight, and then when I let go, it falls out. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to take my gate, whatever kind of gate you had on your machine, and I close it. And now I'm smearing the oil around. So mm -hmm. there's just a nice film of oil in there. That's all the oil I want in this part of the machine. Mm -hmm. The machine does need to go to the technician from time to time. The technician is going to pull this arm cover off. There's parts back here that need lubrication. They're going to take the top. They're going to open it up. There are parts that need lubrication, but not after every quilt. Mm -hmm but not after 10 years either, because the sludge that builds up in here after 10 years is gonna be the same sludge mm -hmm. that's up there. Mm -hmm. So you do need to bring the machine in. Mm -hmm. um, do you ever hear a quilter say, oh, I've never had to have my machine serviced. <laughs> Many times. Yeah. And that's, for me, that's a nightmare, mm -hmm. yeah. because when I get in there, I have to remove all that old stuff first. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I've got all that clean. When I put the plate back on, before I do that, I check for needle marks. Mm -hmm. If there are lots of gouges here, I recommend replacing it. Mm -hmm. Because I will get a call, I broke a needle on the plate, and now my thread is always breaking. And what's happened is the needle mark on the plate has become a little knife. Mm -hmm. And as you stitch, because your stitch is going to go that way, the thread drags along, that needle mark gets sliced. That's what's cutting your thread. Mm -hmm. So I always inspect my plate. Mm -hmm. Snap it into place. Yeah, okay. So that's that area. I know something about this machine that I'd like to show you that will relate to other machines. Okay. Okay? Quality of thread really varies out there. And some threads have a residue on them. 
and I'm going to show you where that residue can be found. And the reason why I'm taking this screw off, and I don't mind if the consumer takes it off or the quilter takes it off, because... Is it's a, it a shiny screw? It's a shiny, shiny screw. So I take this end off, and I want to make sure that you're really seeing right there, Hollis. Mm -hmm. Can you see that that looks like it has a film on it? Yes. That's thread residue. Mm -hmm. Now, is that any thread or just some thread? It's, some threads will do it worse. Okay. And regardless of the name brand, black, navy, and maroon do it the worst. Mm -hmm. um, will you be discussing the difference between hand quilting and machine quilting yes. thread? Yes, yes. Well, there's, there's a finish on hand quilting. And I have seen quilters put hand quilting thread on their machine so, 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 so. And what's happening is the residue from the hand quilting thread is left behind right there. What about the one brand that says it's either for hand or machine? Um, it's pretty rugged thread. Mm -hmm. That's up to you if you want to use it. Mm -hmm. Okay, but there is not a residue on that. That, mm. that clears the way if you want to put it on mm -hmm. your machine, okay? All I'm gonna do is wipe that, and now it's clean. Mm -hmm. When the thread comes down, oh, there's some more right there. When the thread comes down in that thread path, when it's dragging through there, after a while, it's almost like rosin, mm -hmm. which gives traction. You don't want traction no. there. You wanted it to be slippery because the thread wants to slide past that. That's a guide, that's not a thread tension mm -hmm. location. That is a, mm -hmm. just a sliding place. So, and I knew that was going to be in there. Mm -hmm. So the consumer, on some of these front loading machines, there's hinges here, they can open it up. You wanna look right there. You want mm -hmm. to look for that thread residue mm -hmm. right there, okay? Another thing that's nice about a machine that you can see here is, have you ever broken your thread and know it's someplace in oh, there? Oh, yeah. It's someplace oh, in yes. there. Okay. If your machine looks like it can open, then don't be afraid of it. There's a screw there, and we're going to take the screw off of this machine, too, and you can find where the thread is. Mm -hmm. I use surgical tools for that because I can hold on to the thread. When the thread broke, how was the machine going? Was it, was it running, was the hand wheel going this way or this way? I can't remember, probably forward. Absolutely, yeah. so, and if you didn't stop right away, it was wrapping mm -hmm. up. So once you get a tail, go backwards and you just unwrap it. Mm -hmm. And you unwrap it carefully because if you break that tail, you're out of luck. You need a tail to hold on to, but go backwards. Mm -hmm. So that will take care of that one. So that's pretty well what I would do to clean this machine. Always, 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 I change the needle. Mm -hmm. I would never put that needle back in. I don't care if you only did three pot holders. Don't put that needle back in, okay? Mm -hmm. Because a needle dulls out while you're sewing. So we put a needle in, flat to the back. Almost all the machines that are out there now are flat to the back, and I'm talking about that mm -hmm. part of the shank put it in. Now this is another place that I get a phone call. I knew I needed to change my needle. I changed my needle and now it's hitting something. What happens is the needle isn't all the way in, but it looks okay. Mm -hmm. So yes, you changed your needle. But let's see if I can do this so you can really see how much room there is that it turns. That much, I was able to push it up that much I more. See. Mm -hmm. So what I always do when I change the needle, and I've been changing needles for 38 years, I loosen my thumb screw on the needle bar, I give it a shimmy, and then I tighten it. Mm -hmm. Because if I don't loosen it enough, I can't get it get all it, the way up. Get it out. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that's what I would do. I'm always looking things over. This is a nice clean foot. If this had any kind of residue from um, fusible stabilizers, mm -hmm. that would cause a problem. Mm -hmm. 
touch and clean and wipe down everything you take off your machine and you are just eliminating potential problems. Okay, the last time when I worked with you that day, you picked up this uh, bobbin case. Uh, tell me about that again because you had detected something underneath uh, this where there's a spring. Okay. You remember that? Yeah. Okay. When you thread the machine, if there was a little bit of lint on this, on this thread, when I bring it around, that lint can stick under there. Mm -hmm. What this is, is a spring on top of a piece of metal. Mm -hmm. But if I put, we're going to pretend this is lint. Mm -hmm. Do you see I'm holding the spring mm -hmm. up and out of the way? So I'm going to have bad thread tension. You don't have to go to the technician for that. What I would probably do, I don't want to stick a pin under there, and I see every once in a while, um, oh, just dig a pin in there and you'll be able to get it out. I don't want to scratch that surface. Mm -hmm. This has to be as shiny and clean as that area is because mm -hmm. you just want your thread guide gliding out. But I can stick my fingernail under there mm -hmm. and maybe drag a thicker thread under there so it will grab the lint and bring it out. Mm -hmm. But if you see little fibers right there, you know there's more in there. Mm -hmm. And that's going to affect mm -hmm. the lint. Before I put my bobbin case in, I inspect it. I clean it. That looked shiny clean. I see a little bit there. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that's just going to keep building up. Mm -hmm. So you might as well get it out while you have mm -hmm. it in your hand. Mm -hmm. But never Q-tip. Never Q-tip. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you use anything like alcohol to I don't clean? use alcohol because it takes too much away from the machine. What I have in here is a combination of Windex and ammonia. And the only reason why I put Windex in there is so that the bottle isn't clear. I don't mm -hmm. want this to look like water. Mm -hmm. um, I have found that, and I, and I spray it onto here, just missed it. This is damp. Mm -hmm. If I have something I need to get off, then I would use that and dry it off. But that doesn't, it doesn't hurt the plastic, mm -hmm. alcohol. A lot of machines have a lot of plastic around here. Mm -hmm. and that's okay. Mm -hmm. That's not the important part of the machine. It's the insides of the machine I that's see. important. But if I use alcohol, I just stand to dissolve some of the plastic mm -hmm. and I just, it's just too caustic mm -hmm. to, to mm -hmm. use alcohol. Do you want a little bit of historical trivia? Well, of course. If you were a Sears sewing machine dealer, back in the 50s, you would have the most amazing collection of used machines. So someone would come in and say, I don't want to buy a new machine. I don't really want a, use, a new machine. I want a used machine. Well, come on over here. And they would be pristine. Plug it in so that cha cha chunk cha cha chunk cha cha chunk because they were washed with kerosene. Hmm. Took every drop of lubrication out of it, and that's why it did the cha cha chung cha cha chung cha cha chung. Looked beautiful, sounded awful. Well, you know, it's a used machine. I'm sure the stitch is good. You go over to a machine, a new machine, quiet. The only difference was lubrication. Mm -hmm. If you were a Singer dealer back in the 50s, remember those beautiful old black cast iron heads? Oh, yes. Do you know what your requirement was as a Singer dealer? Mm -mm crack it right there with the sledgehammer because that was the only way they could get them out of circulation <laughs> because they just never died. Mm -hmm. So that's what happened in the back room of a sewing machine yeah. shop. Right. Now beyond that uh, you stay away from it. I really do. Even at this point mm -hmm. um, there's some like there's a little board right mm -hmm. there. I don't want to get involved with boards. Yeah. I don't want to get close to boards. You don't want me to get involved. Oh, I do not it. want okay. you to. Yep. Um, there's boards. If your machine has buttons, mm -hmm. there's boards here. There's boards mm -hmm. behind here. Mm -hmm. If your machine had a bobbin monitor, mm -hmm. there's a board there. You don't mm -hmm. want to get involved with that. But where your bobbin case is, where your throat plate is, and this area, that's yours. And you should keep it clean. Okay. okay we have another machine here. Okay. Is there a basic or drastic difference between what you did and the other one in here? One thing about this, it's top loading. Oh, top loading. Okay. So, meaning? Meaning I put the bobbin in from the top. Okay. 
But another thing about that is all that lint is always dropping straight down. So I'm guessing we're going to find more lint in here. Okay. All right. So most of your machines come with these wonderful little screwdrivers mm -hmm. if they are top loading like that. So, and they gave them to the quilter so they could do what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. right. So I'm going to take this screw off because it's a pretty screw and it's right there. That's, it's a shiny screw. It's a shiny screw. I'm going to take the foot off. This one is a snap-on. Mm -hmm. Might as well inspect it. Looks nice and clean. It's starting to wear. You see those three lines? Yes. When you quilt, what do you do at the end of a seam? Do you pull it out? Yes. Okay. And that's fine. But just be aware that when you're sewing and you don't have fabric, that's what's causing that. Mm -hmm. Okay. If that goes all the way down, it'll be like a brass color when all this chrome mm -hmm. is gone. You're not going to get as good traction, so mm -hmm. you probably would want to get a new foot. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take the needle out, because I don't want that in my way. And maybe if I take the plate off, this comes out. It's my bobbin. None of this is put in with careful adjustments. All of this is just going to sit back in. And it's designed to be taken out by the quilter. Because, can you see the arrow right there on that bobbin case? Yes, I can. There's an arrow there also. They line up. Mm -hmm. It was designed to be taken out by you. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is what I was expecting to find. First off, this is your feed dog. Yes. That's what's pulling the fabric through. Mm -hmm. And that would not have come out with the paintbrush. Hmm. It had to come out with a needle. Mm. The reason why you really want to get that out is, here's my feed dog, here's my plate. If I fill up, we'll call this lint, if I fill my feed dog up with lint, I can't get up as high as I'm moving. Mm -hmm. The more lint you get there, the less traction you're going to get because that feed dog can't come up. Mm -hmm. Can you move the hand wheel towards, towards me? So it comes up, goes away, goes back down, comes up and away. But if I have tons of lint there, it you can't just come can't. up. It's That's right. It won't do it. Now the it next cushions thing. cushions it. Exactly. All right, now first I'm going to scoop around here with my paintbrush. Good heavens, it's a wonder it's sewed at all. Okay. And all your top loading machines are going to be sort of like that. Now, we're going to point something out. Modern machines, now a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them come with this that looks like lint in the middle. Mm -hmm. And people are so proud when they take it out and they say, oh, Look at the lint I got out. And what they successfully did was pull out an oil wick. Mm -hmm. And it's about that long. Mm -hmm. and it's really, really hard. And it's saturated with oil. And it has a very important job. It's keeping, move the hand wheel again for me, please. See how this is spinning around? Mm -hmm. That oil wick is keeping that path lubricated. Mm -hmm. Okay. A lot of your top loading machines have what I call a window. And the window is an opening, and I'll stick my screwdriver in it. See how I can get, I can get outside of this little bowl. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to push my paintbrush through, and the lint comes in. Any place I see lint, I'm going to dig it out with a paintbrush. If you have a nice little strong vacuum cleaner, mm -hmm. that works really well too. So I refer to a lot of things that are circular as a clock. So right now, it's at 2 o'clock. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go in at 10 o'clock. Seven o'clock. Still pulling it mm -hmm. out. Five o'clock. That one was clean. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. I see. When you think about that lint being in the bowl and being all around there, totally different bobbin case than what we had with the Bernina. Mm -hmm. This is sitting on top of all that lint that was there. Mm -hmm. And as it fills, it's up and up and up and up and up. Mm -hmm. To the point that sometimes the, the thread gets caught underneath or gets caught on the top. We have something else going on with this bobbin case. All of that lint. Mm -hmm. I want that lint off of there. Toothbrush works really good because it, I'm brushing hard, but it's not hurting it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to brush where the bobbin actually sits in. It's not enough just to do the side that you mm -hmm. always see. You want to do the underside. Look at that. I will say over and over again, inspect everything. If this was rough, feel how smooth that is? Mm -hmm. A needle mark would grab your thread. Mm -hmm. So this is how it happens. Ah, I broke my needle. The needle drops in, gouges the bobbin case, and then you try to sew again, and the needle thread is going to get caught mm -hmm. on that gouge. Sometimes the gouge is there, sometimes it's there, Sometimes it's in this area. So I'm always inspecting it. Mm -hmm. Because why put a bobbin case back in there if you already know it's damaged? That's right. Okay. I do recommend going to, if you bought your machine from a dealer, get your bobbin case from the dealer. Because mm -hmm. there's hundreds of different kinds of bobbin cases. Mm -hmm. And you want to make sure you put the right one mm -hmm. in. Easy to put it in. I've got a little spring here. And I've got that arrow there. Yes, I see. I put it in, I matched up with the arrow, my spring is doing its job, mm -hmm. I've got it clean. Now this machine has a seam here. We won't go into taking off the bottom, yeah. but if you see a, a seam and you flip it over and there's two shiny screws there, take them out and clean the bottom too. Mm -hmm. Doesn't affect the sewing as much as, why don't you give the sewing machine a break yeah. and clean as much as yeah. you can. Mm -hmm. I am going to take this off. The screwdrivers that, if you're going to be working on your machine, mm -hmm. you want to take a look at what most of your screws are. Mm -hmm. They're either going to be a Torx, mm -hmm. that Bernina that we did used yes. a Torx, or straight, or Phillips. Okay. Those are really the only three that sewing machines mm -hmm. are using. shiny, so it's mm -hmm. okay to come out. We got more lint in there. I see. All right. There's a board here. I don't want them working near the board, but this obvious in-your-face lint, let's get rid of that. Mm -hmm. And again, this is where if you, oh, there is a, is that a caught thread? No, that's just a reflection. This is the area here and on, on this take up that if you broke a thread and it got caught in there, look how readily available be, it is. It's gonna be, be right there. Down in there. Yeah. But it's mm. once you get the end off, mm -hmm. easy to find it. Mm -hmm. Okay? So since I can very easily take this end off, some of them the door opens up. Move the hand wheel for me again. See this going up and down? Yes. That's the needle bar. Mm -hmm. That goes up and down 800 times a minute. Mm -hmm. If that needle bar gets old, when I do this to my hands, they get warmer and mm -hmm. warmer. If I had a little bit of baby oil on them, they wouldn't get mm -hmm. warmer. If I have this dry as a bone, as you sew, and quilters seem to sew for like no problem, sew for 45 minutes without stopping the machine. That needle bar could get so hot that your machine would seize up. Mm -hmm. So this is the call I get. Mm -hmm. I was sewing all day because I was at a retreat, and the whole thing seized up, and the next morning I went and it was fine. It's because it spent the night cooling off. Mm -hmm. But if she sews again for another six hours, it's going to seize gonna up again. Seize up. So we're just going to put a, not a Tin Woodman amount of oil, just a speck of oil there. Mm -hmm. Move the hand wheel, and you're going to see it get smeared up and down. That's all you need. Mm -hmm. It'll keep it running so much better. Okay. 
So that's what I would do with this machine. From this angle, I see a little bit more lint. Well, this may be a, a question for a, a thread, but I read so many times people saying, my machine doesn't like a certain kind of thread. Uh, is that because maybe more lint builds up and it snags or? It can be that. Or? It can be uh, a finish that's on the thread. Mm -hmm. It can be how the person threaded the machine. Let's say you're using thread like this. Mm -hmm. If I went straight from this cone to the first thread guide, from the table to the first thread guide, down and up and down, I'm going to have a lot of problems with it because mm -hmm. it's pulling very irregularly off mm -hmm. there. So a lot of the problems that people have with the thread is how they actually put it on their machine. I see. The threading of the machine would really affect how it, it would performs. Be okay. And I would assume that any place that thread comes through, there could be lint, yep. uh, there could be a snag or whatever. There could be rust, it, there so. could be lint, there could yep. be a caught thread. Mm -hmm. The machine was designed to have the thread pull off smoothly, mm -hmm. go through the thread guide smoothly, through the tension discs smoothly. Mm -hmm. If you know that, you, like if you saw lots and lots of that residue there, mm -hmm. it's probably there also. This is when the ammonia on a rag is really good because you can just drag it through your tension discs. I am buffing your tension discs to a shiny. I've heard some people say they use dental floss. Is Not that a waxed. Good? Not, not waxed. Not waxed. Okay. And some people have used waxed. Mm -hmm. And so you are basically reintroducing a residue to your tension mm -hmm. discs. If you're going to do that, it's a good idea to make a knot or two in there so that as you drag your dental floss through, that little knot will grab anything else that might mm -hmm. be caught in there. Okay. So that's what I would do with this machine. And I would do that after a full-size quilt, maybe five or six table runners. Um, and listen to your machine. Okay. If, if this was really, really dirty, you'd hear all sorts of chatter. Why put up with that? Mm -hmm. Stop, take off the plate, take out the bobbin case, put in the drop of oil that we put into the Bernina, um, clean this out. Mm -hmm. If it's chattering, it's because there's something wrong. I see. Okay, we have one more machine, probably the most coveted machine Ever. Isn't that beautiful? I love it. All right. The Featherweight is, like you said, the most coveted machine. And there's two basic reasons why it shows up at yard sales as a broken machine. There's two reasons. The first one is when they put the needle in, the flat goes to the left. Mm -hmm. On the Bernina, flat to the back. On the Necky flat to the back. On lots of old singers, your, your old treadle singers, the flat was to the right. In fact, it was so important that on some throat plates on featherweights, they actually had an arrow engraved hmm. on the plate. So that's the first reason. If you've put the needle in backwards, I get a phone call that says, it was sewing perfectly, I changed the needle, and now it is one, skipping stitches, two, hitting something. And that's because the needle was put in backwards. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to let you explore this needle. Remember I said I want everything, you need to examine everything. Mm -hmm. I want you to examine the tip of that needle and tell me what you find out with your finger. And I want it to be the tip of the needle, the point the of the needle. The tip of the needle. Well, it's sharp. If you go down oh, like damn. that. Can you feel the burr? Yeah. That burr is like a fish hook. Mm -hmm. And if you sew with that, it's going to grab the stitch. It's going to look like bad thread tension mm -hmm. because it's going to grab your stitch and bring it up to the surface or leave it down below as a loop. Mm -hmm. Important, important part of the machine. So the first reason is the needle's in wrong. The second reason is I cleaned my machine, I cleaned my featherweight, you got to be real specific, I cleaned my featherweight 
and I put it all back together and now I'm breaking needles. Or there's a tag on the for sale sign that says out of time. Mm -hmm. And people are afraid of a machine that's out of time. So we're going to take off the throat plate and I'm going to take it off from the bottom because I don't want to hurt this beautiful enamel. Okay, you've got that spacer there. Mm-hmm. Right? Yes. Now let's see if we can really show. I've taken the bobbin case out. Do you see that finger? Mm-hmm. That finger can just spin around. And it doesn't matter where it is, this plate will fit on there. So you clean, you clean, it's all shiny, there's no lint, you've done such a wonderful job, but you've missed one important thing. This finger has to be at 12 o'clock because that finger needs to fit in there. Through that. I had that happen one time. And what did it do to the machine? It didn't do anything to the machine. Fortunately, there was someone there that could tell me what was wrong. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. That's the other, those two things, how to put the needle in, how to put this finger in the plate. Okay. This finger needs to be at 12 o'clock mm -hmm. if you want it to sew correctly. It can be any place to put the plate on, but to sew correctly, we're going to have it at 12 o'clock. Okay. Can you, can you still see the finger? All right. Now I'm going to put the plate on, and again, I don't want to hurt the enamel, so that's why your, your free arm is down. There it is. And is the finger there it in is. there? It's, it's in place now. Okay. Then you're golden. That is the biggest problem of these machines, hmm. is that finger. Mm-hmm. So your wonderful featherweight is virtually impossible to break, but because of those two things, it's really easy to make it not so nice. Mm -hmm. And then you would clean it just like you would any others. The yeah. biggest enemy of a featherweight is water. Is it? Yeah. Um, you know if a machine has been in contact with water because this beautiful black enamel mm -hmm. gets crumbly. Mm -hmm. and then it starts to peel off and then there's like a white powder that was probably the adhesive for the mm -hmm. enamel. And um, there are people out there doing a wonderful job restoring these. Um, you can get them painted in purple oh, or yellow. Yes, I've seen and them. they still sew beautifully. Mm -hmm. Now um, this could be taken off, right? Yes. To get into that particular area. And again, it's all shiny, it's yeah. all pretty, so yep, it's yours to take off. Okay, and there it is. And about six different moving parts yeah. versus a gazillion. how many boards and yeah. gazillion on the other. This was Singer's perfect machine. Mm -hmm. um, this one and the 201 was a wonderful machine mm -hmm. also. But the thing, um, there's, there's books about featherweights. And it was so perfect and so precisely made that you really don't want to get a thread jam in it. Mm -hmm. Because there's no room for thread jams. Mm -hmm. But if it's clean and oiled and threaded correctly, it just purrs. Purrs. Your machine in periodically. 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 Because if you service. really take care of it, like, like we've shown, once every two years would be okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. As long as you're really taking the lint out of that hook mm -hmm. area. But I think you've already told us that there's some things that we can't do. Absolutely. That uh, with the new technology, that, that, that takes uh, an expert really to do it. Yeah. Well, I've learned something. Oh, good. I'll get my paintbrush out. <laughs> okay, excellent. I'll get my vacuum out to suck that stuff out. So, All right. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Uh, what you've talked about is, is what I read on the Internet constantly, uh, people asking questions about their machine. Excellent. And I've always thought that it might just possibly something kind of simple, and you've made it simple. Go ahead. Thank you. You're very welcome. Mm -hmm. You've just seen and heard one of the most important things that any quilt maker who uses a sewing machine, or for that matter, anyone who uses a sewing machine, should be uh, aware of and absolutely do regularly, and that's maintain your equipment. If you don't maintain it, it's not going to work. And nowadays, the least little thing that uh, happens in there 
uh, can really throw your work, uh, you know, in a spin. So whether or not you have a real vintage machine, or what I call a mid-century machine, or the new computerized machines, maintenance is important. You can do that. Look in your manual because it will give you the very basic information about keeping it clean, oiling it if necessary, and keep it working in absolute top-notch order. I want to thank the viewers who watched this episode, which I believe is a very important aspect of uh, quilt making or anyone who, who sews it use the machine, and that's keeping it in good working order. I especially want to thank uh, my friend Kathy Racine. Uh, been in this business a long time, knows everything you need to know about sewing machines, and is really uh, fervent about that which we've been talking about and keep your equipment in good working order. Stay tuned or come back and see us in the next episode. have a lot of information to share with you. Uh, goodbye for now.